Hey everyone, this is Josh. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be building a folding table for my X-Carve. I based my design on the table built by Tark on the Inventables forum. You can find a link for that below. The tabletop will be a torsion box built out of half inch and three quarter inch plywood. And the table base will be built out of three quarter inch plywood and house three small drawers in the cabinet. The first step in the build is to cut down all of the sheet goods. I used two sheets of four by eight three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and half of a sheet of half inch plywood. Here you can see me cutting down the tabletop and all of the torsion box supports. Next, I take these to the miter saw to cut everything down to length. Using the stop block on my miter saw station made quick work of the repeatable cuts. The first step in assembling the torsion box is to attach the back support to the tabletop. This is done using pocket screws and glue. Then we screw holes into the front support to house the bolt for the front legs. Once this is complete, we take the piece to the bandsaw to cut out the relief so you can fit your hand onto the front of the tabletop to lift it in place. With the holes and cut complete, we can then glue and screw the front support onto the tabletop just like we did with the back. Next, we drill the same holes into the second front support so the bolts have a second piece to go through and the nut will have something to connect to. We can then drill the holes into the side supports that house the bolts that allow the table to fold down. Then we glue and screw the type two side supports into place. Thank you. 
I forgot to film myself installing the second front support, but as you can see here, you need to use two of the vertical supports as spacers to space it correctly, and then glue and screw it into place. Up next, we can install the vertical supports. You will want to use the shorter horizontal supports to space these correctly. Since the middle short supports are actually longer than the first two sets of the short supports, I installed the two supports from opposite ends and then measured the middle short supports and cut them to size. With all the vertical supports in place, I can install the shorter horizontal supports. I used pocket holes for the outside walls as I didn't want screws showing on the outside. However, this made reaching the pocket holes with the drill pretty difficult. If you decide to build this, I would recommend making sure you drill your pocket holes high enough on the support so that you can reach the screw with your drill. The inner walls just used regular one and a quarter inch screws through the vertical supports. As I mentioned before, here you can see me measuring the middle supports and cutting them to size before installing them. The final step in assembling the tabletop is to cut the bottom to size. I used half inch plywood for the bottom as it really doesn't provide any structural support. I used my jigsaw to cut out holes for easy access to the nuts and bolts connecting the legs and the table to the base. I only used screws but no glue to attach this to the bottom of the tabletop in case I needed access to the inside of it for whatever reason at a later date. With the tabletop complete, it's time to start on the base of the table. The first step is to cut the sides of the base. With the piece of plywood being so wide, I couldn't use my table saw to safely cut these, so I decided to use my miter saw. I use a stop block to ensure I cut on the same line as I flip it over. I then drill out the holes in the two right sides to accept the bolts for the folding tabletop. I can now start assembling the table base by attaching the two sides to the cabinet top using glue and pocket screws. I use right angle clamps to keep everything square, but make sure to check everything after the clamps are removed just to be safe. Next, I attach the back of the cabinet. I add it in this step to make adding the far side easier as it keeps the cabinet base square. Before attaching the front and back stretchers, I cut out a section of the front stretcher so that I can easily reach the tabletop to raise and lower it.
Now I install the supports between the cabinet and the far side. There are two supports along the back and one support on the bottom of the front of the table. I then install the bottom using glue and screws. It's very important that you make sure everything is square and level here. If it's not, you will have a difficult time installing the tabletop and drawers later. With the basic assembly of the table base complete, it's time to test fit the table. With some help, I set the tabletop in place and use two 3 8 inch bolts and washers to hold it in place. Once the bolts are in place, I can test to make sure the tabletop flips up without hitting anything. I then remove the tabletop and start installing the casters. Each of these is set one inch inside of the bottom and four holes are drilled. I used four nuts and bolts for each caster as I wasn't sure screws were enough to hold them in place. Better safe than sorry. It's now time to start the finishing process on the tabletop and base. I use the random orbital sander to sand all of the top and base and then apply a few coats of wipe on poly, lightly sanding in between each coat. After reattaching the tabletop, I measured the distance from the bottom of the plywood top to the floor and cut the legs to length. I then sanded the edges and rounded off the top so that the legs can collapse into the tabletop.
I then place the legs into place temporarily and mark where the holes for the bolts should be drilled and drill the holes out. I can then install the legs onto the tabletop. I use a 5 inch 3 8 inch bolt with a washer between the bolt and the tabletop. Behind the leg I screw on a nut to keep the leg from moving along the bolt as the bolt extends past the leg to the back support on the torsion box. On the other side of the back support I use a lock nut to secure the bolt in place. Note that the right leg should actually be flush to the back support and the left leg should be flush to the front of the tabletop. This will allow the legs to overlap when collapsed as you can see here. The next step is to attach the X-carve to the table. To do this, I ordered a few extra extrusion brackets and T-slot nuts from Invenables, as I knew they would fit the X-carve perfectly. I simply inserted the T-slot nuts and screwed the brackets to them. Then I used one and a quarter inch screws to attach these to the table, securing the X-carve in place. One note here, if you're building this table, you want to be very careful and take good measurements for where your X-carve sits, as you don't want the Z-axis and spindle hitting the front support when collapsing the tabletop. Up next, it's time to start on the drawers and cabinet fronts. I start by cutting all of the plywood down to size, with the exception of all the fronts. I keep this as one sheet of plywood. You'll see why in a minute. I wanted to do something unique to customize the table and figured I would achieve that by carving a design out of all the fronts of the drawers. Here I'm putting a finish on the fronts before carving them so the design will pop a little bit. Then I secure the piece to the X-carve and start the carve. It's fitting that the first carve on the new table is for the table itself. Once the carve is complete, I lightly sand the surface to remove any burrs from the carved areas. I can then cut the drawer and cabinet fronts to size. The first piece to install is the solid front. This isn't an actual drawer, but I probably should have made it one. My thought here was to actually cut a hole in the top and store the X controller in this section, but I actually ended up liking it better on top as you see it here, so I left this as is. I might change this later to be an actual drawer. Then I install the cabinet door and hinges. I tape the hinges in place and use a self-centering drill bit to drill the holes. After installing the screws, I add some padding so the hinges don't completely close. 
The reason for this is so that I can use hot glue to temporarily position and attach the door in place and then secure it in place easily. I then assemble the drawers. Since these drawers are so small, I only use glue and pin nails to assemble them. I never had any issues with this not being enough strength, and these drawers won't be holding a ton of stuff anyway, so I think it should be fine. To install the drawer slides, I use pre-cut spacer blocks to make sure they are installed at the same level. Unfortunately, when cutting the drawers, I cut them about an eighth of an inch too narrow, so I had to add some shims to the drawer slides to compensate for this. I then extend the drawer slides and set the drawers in place, making sure that the slides extend nearly to the edge of the drawer. I can then screw them in place. Once the drawer slide is installed, I can push the drawer all the way in, position the drawer front with a spacer below it, and clamp it in place. I can then pull the drawer out and screw the drawer front in place from inside the drawer. I follow the same process for all three drawers, but use shorter spacer blocks for the top two. Once all three drawers are installed, I can put them all into place and the table is complete.
All right, so that's going to wrap this project up. Uh, as you can see here, the table fits perfectly right here on my wall. If you remember from previous videos, um, it took up pretty much my entire workbench. Uh, that just wasn't going to work for me. I'm working with limited space in here, so I needed this space uh, as much as possible. Uh, I should be able to just basically take this, wheel it out, pull the table up, secure it in place, and start my projects like that. Um, as far as what I want to add in the future, uh, I'd like to add a folding side table here to this side so that I can pull it out, fold that table up, and have a place to put my laptop. Uh, right now, it kind of has to sit on top of the X controller, and that's just, it's just not going to work there. Uh, it's just not very stable, and it worries me sitting there. Um, you know, I hope to make plans for this available at some point. Um, you know, this is, like I said at the start of the video, this was based on Tark's design in the Inventables forums. So, you know, I want to kind of get his permission to actually add any plans for it uh, before I do that. Um, but yeah, with that, I just want to kind of wrap it up. Uh, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for watching the video.